You're watching ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Share and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. This is Rob, and this video we're going to do our Kaiju movie review of the week. And this week we're going to review Mothra, Mothra's solo movie. And this movie came out uh, back in, I believe, 1961 for Japan, and then 1963 or 62 for the United States. And once again, I have access to the American version. So. 10 minutes worth of footage cut from the Japanese version for the American version. Uh, never saw the Japanese version. I've always ever seen the American one. Uh, this is probably the third time I've seen this movie, but the first time I've seen it uh, in quite some time. But if you watch any other Mothra movie after this, let's say, for example, you've never seen the first Mothra, and you've seen Godzilla vs. Mothra, or Battle for Earth, or whatever. One of the things that they do to set Mothra off is do the whole either kidnap the cosmos girls or the fairies or in this movie there were you know the, the little beauties or look for the fairies and have them summon Mothra for the better of human race that theme is in this movie so, uh, basically what happens is there is a the, the movie is about uh, it starts off with a crash this boat has an accident. There are survivors that are stranded on this island that is assumed to be very heavily irradiated because of, once again, the whole atomic theme. And for some reason, the survivors who eventually get rescued do not suffer any radiation poisoning because, uh, and their, their reasoning, they feel the reason for that is because of the juice that the natives on the island gave them to drink. You can call it juice, you can call it red paint, whatever you want, because that's what it looks like. <laughs> so, obviously, this becomes a big thing, and the media, government, they all want to know what the hell's going on on the island. They go to the island, they stir shit up, and at the end of the day, a greedy man who wants to make a lot of money kidnaps the fairies, and off we go. So, after that, you can more or less get the gist of the movie. You know what happens, there's no surprises there. It's not a big spoiler, because if you've seen one Mothra movie, or one kind of Mothra movie, with the exception of the newer ones, you know what I mean? Uh, you've probably seen it all. This is just the premise. So, <clears throat> but what's cool about this movie is that, you know, this is the first time Mothra had been seen. So, looking at it from that standpoint, the quality of the movie is really good. I have actually criticized Mothra's look in the past and sometimes her looking mangy, but in this movie she looks really good. And it's probably because the suit or actually the puppet, the large puppet, because they're probably swinging it around on, is brand new. So that's probably why it looks good. Also, um, I did get to see this in color because it, it was originally in black and white, but I got to see it in color. The quality for from where I saw it was really good. It, I, it, it had to be upscaled maybe to 720 uh, not that the movie's out on Blu-ray as far as I know, but the quality was that good, so I was happy with that. Um, so, but, you know, it, it, it's a good, you know, I, I had to really sit there and take the movie in from the standpoint of when it came out and how it was viewed. Because actually, the movie was critic, uh, critically uh, received very well at the time it was, it was out. The special effects were well done. There was hardly, I, I didn't even see any stock footage, which was unusual considering how when Mothra's trudging through the city, you get the traditional, let's blast this monster with military stuff, and a lot of times that's an opportunity to use stock footage. Didn't get that here, which is a good thing. Also, in traditional Toho fashion, you don't see Mothra in this movie for a long time. Uh, when I clocked it, it was 45 minutes into the movie. Now, this movie is an hour and 20 minutes more than halfway so more than halfway through the movie before you finally see Mothra's caterpillar burst out the egg and make her way for Tokyo so but again even before that the, the stuff leading up to it was pretty good it was good it wasn't wasn't overly you know there was no corny stuff there was a good story the actors are good there were some parts that were a little bit funny and cheesy but not horrible and a lot of good traditional 
actors that many of you have seen in many G movies, you know, um, including, and I forget the gentleman's name, but he played Dr. Sarah Zawa in 56. He was in this movie. Um, and a lot of other familiar faces, and they, you know, did a very, very good job. Once Mothra hits the scene, it, it, it becomes quite a spectacle because very rarely do we get to see Mothra in a caterpillar form wrecking the city. I mean, you get to see it in this movie, you get to see it in Destroy All Monsters, but you don't really get to see that much. So that's always an interesting sight because Mothra is, you know, when she's in her larva form, obviously very, you know, she's a caterpillar. So it's always funny to see her wrecking a city in that form like in this movie she's trudging through the city and she's almost like headbutting the buildings so which i thought was kind of funny the cocoon scene was great like when she sits there and she starts cocooning herself uh that was very very cool again i mean it's not anything i haven't seen before but again looking at it from the perspective of the time it came out and a first time watcher that's something that could look very very good and like I said, even now, the special effects carry over very well. And you guys know, traditionally, I'm not a big Mothra fan. Like, I, she's okay, but I'm not a big Mothra fan. But I got to give credit where credit's due. This movie was, was pretty entertaining. I think for the time it was made, the special effects carry over well. The suit slash puppet, because I'm going to say that, you know, I know sometimes they use like a pulley to to dangle with the flying monsters like Ghidorah and stuff like that. Uh, very nice design. I, again, a new design, so they're, they're at their best when they're first being used. Um, story was fine. It's a story that we've seen before, but because this was the first time, it set, you know, this was the originator. So, again, looking at it from a perspective of the first time it was shown and back at that time was a very, very good story. Uh, because it, it does give you the impression that while this monster is wrecking the, the city, it's not doing it to be malicious like some other monsters. And it's not doing it because it's evil. It's looking for their herald, basically. You know, she's represented as a god. The twins would be her herald. So she wants them. She, you know, and, and once she gets them, that's it. Story's over. You know, all right, I got my twins. Peace out. And she she bounces. So, but overall, Mothra is a very, very good movie. Uh, I, I have to say, despite how I feel about the character, credit where credit's due. It's a very good movie. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. I would definitely love to watch the Japanese version to see where the differences are. Um, but overall, I enjoyed it. And watching it again, I was like, wow, this, you know, I remember. I, I didn't remember it being as good as it was, but it, it's a very good movie. I enjoyed it. So, but anyway, guys, that's it for this video. This is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Take it easy. Thank you for watching ETN. Don't forget to subscribe and join the Nation Facebook page.